Welcome back to the channel and today we'll be showing you how to make a simple shell in Blender 4.3. Now this is the final result here from the tutorial and this is a beginner friendly tutorial. So this is very simple. We're mainly going to be relying on uh, modifiers to kind of model this, but it's kind of really fun. Good little beginners exercise. So if you want to learn how to make the shell and set up a basic little shader like this, keep watching and I'll show you step by step how you can do it in Blender 4.3. So we're gonna keep this really simple. Let's jump into a new scene in Blender. I'll be using Blender 4.3 for this. And I'm just gonna go ahead and with everything selected, I'm gonna delete it. And then we're gonna go Shift A. We're gonna to go to our mesh options and we're just gonna add in a circle. And what we wanna do, we wanna go into edit mode, okay? So you can come up here and just go into edit mode. The shortcut is just to press tab. And once you're in edit mode, what you're going to do in the front orthographic view with all of this selected, you're just going to go R and rotate it very, very slightly like this, barely rotating it just like that. Just give it a little bit of offset. I guess it's not perfectly flat. Then we're going to tab back into object mode. And now we're going to go to our modifier here. I'm going to go to um, the add modifier tab, click here and search and type in array click on array and then come here to the X factor and make it zero. And then on the Z, just just give it a value of like, I don't know, 20 for now. And let's come here to the count and let's make it something like 500 should be roughly what we're looking for. I guess I know that seems like a lot of circles stacked on top of each other. And just in case you're curious, the reason we um, actually gave this a little bit of an offset in edit mode, because if it was perfectly flat, this would happen. So we just need a tiny bit of an offset so this can work with the factors. Okay, so now we have this arraying, but we wanna offset this. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go Shift A. We're gonna go to our empty options here. We're gonna add in a cube. Then select our array stack here. Then go over here to the modifier and enable object offset. Then come to the drop down and then click the eyedropper and then just select that empty by hovering over it and clicking on it. Optionally, you can also just come here and search for the empty and click on it. So now let's go into our front view and let's select this empty and we're now gonna go R and we're just gonna slightly rotate it to create an offset. So let's just keep rotating, rotating till we get something like this for now. Okay, just slightly rotating. You can see they're all kind of wrapped around. And then we're gonna go to our top orthographic view and now we're gonna rotate it slightly, so I'm pressing R to rotate, I'm slightly rotating it this way, like so. And then with this empty selected, I'm gonna go S and I'm gonna very slightly scale it. In fact, you can hold in Shift after you've pressed S, just so you have very fine control. So I'm gonna go something like that and click, okay. And then in the top view, I'll go R to rotate again and rotate it out even more, like so. And then in the front view, I might just come here and just rotate this this way a little bit. So this is just one of those things where you gotta kind of play with it. So I'll come over here and I'll scale it again just a little bit. And maybe scale the empty just one more little bit just so we get more of a finer result. So yeah, you can mess around with this all you want. But you can see this is the sort of basic way you can make a shell shape. So once you've rotated it on the axes and scaled it to kind of get this sort of shape, um, just which is very small little adjustments. But once you have that in place, all you can do is select your shell now, come to your modifier and just come to the drop down and apply that. We can now select this empty and press delete. And now we have these edges. So let's just tab into edit mode. Up here, let's go to edge select and make sure everything is active. And then you're gonna press control E and once you press Control E, you're gonna go over to Bridge Edge Loops. And now you should see this. Pretty cool. So at this point, we can enable proportional editing, come to the drop down and make it connected only. And then we can kind of grab the edge over here and go G and roll your middle mouse just to control the fall off. We can kind of slightly bring in some of these edges here that are kind of overlapping, especially where you're gonna be seeing into the shell. But you don't have to do that everywhere. Kind of just around here just so you have some just slight amount of contact. So all I'm doing is just grabbing an edge and just kind of moving it like that. But that's all you have to really do. And then from here, we can go to our modifiers, add modifier, search and type in solid and give it a solidify. 
And then let's just kind of give it a, let's go into the positives here. Just kind of make it thick. And in fact, let's just also come here to our mesh edit mode and let's just check the normals. And the normals are all facing out, which is fine. Okay, so yeah, just give it a little bit of thickness here. You can see, you can go as much or as little as you want. I'm gonna go with about 0 0.098. Should be fine. I'm gonna tab back out. And now I'm gonna right click and go shade smooth. And I'm also gonna to go to my modifiers again, and I'm gonna go add modifier, search and type in sub. And I give this a subdivision surface just to smooth it out even more. And at this point you can see it's quite dense with the topology, but it's actually fine. It's not too bad. Okay, so now we've modeled the shell, which I think is a really fun little um, beginner's exercise. So what we'll do now is we're going to our front view. We'll grab our shell. We'll double tap R and I'm just going to kind of rotate it and kind of give it a cool looking position, something like this. You can place it however you want. Then I'm going to go shift A, I'm going to add in a camera and I'm just going to move the camera back and then I'm going to go into the camera view and you can either, you know, move your camera further back or you can grab your shell and kind of scale the shell down a bit, which is what I'll do. And I'll move my camera just a little bit closer. And once you have your camera and your shell, you're going to go to your render properties. Change it to cycles. I recommend if you have a GPU that you use it. If not, don't worry about it. And then you're gonna go over to your render max samples. Let's make this, I'm gonna go with 70. That should be fine, especially if you have denoising enabled. Now let's go shift A. Let's go to our light options, add in an area light and go G, Z and move it up. In your camera view, you can now with that light selected to go to your um, light properties. Let's change this to 300 on the power here and then let's come here to the size and increase it a little bit so now we have this area light and we can also go shift d to duplicate and you can place as many as you want around here i like to have one kind of coming from the back just for a little bit of rim lighting and i'm going to go shift d again rotate it so just something simple like that and then in the camera view you can now go z and then go rendered and you should see that the shell is lit up quite nicely. So we're gonna keep the material super simple. We're gonna select the shell. Let's go over to materials properties. Let's go new. Let's call it shell. Let's come here to the base color. And let's change that to a noise texture. And then let's go into our shading workspace. And in our shading workspace, we're gonna go into our camera view. We're gonna press Z in here and we're gonna go rendered. And now we can take this node set up here. We have this noise going in here to the principal. Let's just move our noise up and go shift a search and get a color ramp. Let's just drag these two values kind of closer to each other just so we can see what we have. And then let's take the detail up to 12 and the roughness will increase as well. So we have this sort of um, nice looking texture. And what you can do is you can go shift a search and get another color ramp. Place it in here and then let's take this white value, drag it down and let's make it sort of like a yellowish kind of cream color. And then let's take this black value, click on it. Let's make that a bit lighter in value and make it kind of brownish like this. And now that looks very nice and kind of like a shell. You can also come here and plug this first color ramp color into the roughness. And if that is looking too glossy, all you have to do is kind of drag this value up here we can kind of go shift D to duplicate this color ramp, place it on here. And now we can individually control the roughness. So I can kind of drag these two values, kind of swap them around, kind of drag this until I get something that is just the right amount of gloss. Okay. So you can play around with that all you want. So now it's not too glossy, but it has a little bit of roughness in some places. And you could also, if you wanted to, you can go shift A, search and get a bump place a bump over here and plug it into a normal and then plug this color ramp here into the height and then give it a strength of 0.05. Now you have a little bit of bump to the shell as well. That is how you make a shell. So let's just quickly go ahead and save this and then let's go render and render the image. And there we have it guys. That is how to make a simple shell in Blender 4.3. I really hope you have enjoyed this little beginner's modeling exercise and I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial.